Has God helped you in the months that are past? Have you received any help from God at all? If we put our trust in men, they can disappoint us. In fact, he tells us, man is limited. God of Jacob, who is our God, he lives forevermore. He is our helper. He is our helper. For anyone who we believe, the days have come. From wherever you are listening to me, God has sent me to you and to let you know you shall be remembered for favor i say you shall be remembered to be favor Today is, well, we're rounding up our fasting and prayer today, and God has been faithful. We started in December, and he's been faithful and been kind. And while I was studying, something that he dropped in my heart, and that's what's led to the topic for today. The topic is, how intentional are you in your faith walk with God? How intentional are you in your faith walk with God? Let's start with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. Abba, we bless you. Thank you because you are good. Thank you because as we listen, we yield. We yield to what you have to say, and we thank you for it. Thank you because it is done. Needs are met in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Abba. In Jesus' name I've prayed. I just want to thank Reverend and Reverend Mrs. Idowood for this opportunity and the entire church as well for this opportunity to bring God's word to us. Like I said earlier, the topic is how intentional are you in your faith walk with God? If you look at the, the theme, Great Abundance, have you actually noticed that it has an exclamation mark? And when we say something has an exclamation mark, it means it is a declaration. It is a prophetic work of faith. It is not something that you use head knowledge for. It is not something that you use and say, maybe it looks like it, and it is like it, so I will walk in it. No, it is a walk in the prophetic. God has said it is a year of great abundance, and it is so. Now, like I said, you can't use head knowledge for this. For instance, God tells me, oh, Abriana, I want you to go to the town called Sunrise. And, and it's more specific, and he says, I want you to go on the 30th of March. And I go, okay, yes, Lord. I don't ask how. I just know that God has said, go to the town called Sunrise. Afterwards, I know that I can't ask anybody else because... I mean, no one has walked this path before. So I don't really have like a precedence to use, but I know that God has told me to do this thing. And I start using head knowledge and I say, if the sun rises in the east, that means God is taking me to one of the towns in the east. Remember, I have not asked God. I have not said anything to him. I just know that he's saying, go to a town called Sunrise. Then I happen to even, after saying, oh, thank God for Rema, I, I have the, the, the Rema to go to this town in the east. Then I meet my friend, also spirit-led, maybe, and he says, oh, and I tell him about what God has told me. And he says, oh, the meaning of my town in my language means sunrise. And I immediately say, oh, wow, Rema, 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 thank God for this. And 
I go to that town. Do you know that there is a 99% chance that I have been misled by my head knowledge? That's what some of us are doing with this thing. God has given us a theme. He said it's great abundance. We have not asked how. We have not ha asked what. We just say, ah, it's abundance. It has to do with financial prosperity. Really? What about great abundance has to do with financial prosperity as opposed to abundant souls being reconciled back to the Father? Why are we using our desires, our motives, and placing it on what God has said instead of us to ask him how he wants the great abundance? He told you so. Then ask him how. Don't just lean on your desires and say, oh, because this is what it is, then if it's great abundance, then it is fulfilling my desires. That's not what faith is. What are you intentional about? You know, are you using your faith to bring your favorable desires to pass? Let's open the scriptures and see what God has to say. Let's open our Bibles to Luke 18, verse 1 to 8. Luke 18, verse 1 to 8. I read. I like it in NLT, so I'll read this. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I do not fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I am going to see that she gets justice because she's wearing me out with her constant requests. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But then the Son of Man returns. How many will he find on the earth who have faith? Praise the Lord. Many of us think that God is this unjust judge. You see, God is not an irresponsible father that you have to pull to do his job. God is not a reluctant father that has many blessings that you have to twist and turn with your faith so that he can reply to all your needs. That's not who God is. We have become so accustomed to a father that is reluctant that if we just have more faith, he will do what we want. How about what he wants? How about aligning with his will? How about knowing what he has planned for us and walking in perfect sync with what he wants? You see, God is not indifferent to faith. As a matter of fact, his word says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, he says that without faith, it is impossible to please him. You must believe first that he exists and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. Not diligently seek him so that he would finance you or diligently seek him so that your desires will be met. But diligently seek him, his majesty, his all, his will, his purpose, his plan. That's what we are to seek. Now let's read something else. Let's read the word. The word always over everything. Let's read Mark 11, verse 23 to 24. Okay. Are we in NLTO? Let's do NKJV, New King James. It says, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. I mean, many of us know this scripture. We've used it time and time again to, you know, trust God for everything that he's, we want or we need. But let's look at another scripture in the same Bible. Let's open our Bibles to James, James 4, verse 3. James 4, verse 3. I read in the NLT, yeah, NLT version. And it says, And even when you ask, 
You don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. You ask, but you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. That means it is possible that we ask amiss. It is possible that we ask amiss if our motives are not aligned. It is possible that we ask amiss if our desires are not aligned with the will of the Father. I mean, if you pick only Mark 11, 24, you think that your desires do not need any critical observation or examination. But the same Bible, the same word of God tells us in James 4, verse 3, that it is possible to ask amiss. It is dangerous to pick one verse in isolation in the word of God and stand on it. We take the entire word of God in consolidation and stand on it as our doctrine. We don't take one scripture. This is the balance. If you ask whatsoever you desire, you would get it. But if you ask amiss, you won't get it. So as much as you ask according to your desires, your desires have to be aligned. Your desires have to be aligned to his will. It, your desires have to be aligned to his, with his word. Your faith should not only accommodate things that are favorable to you. I'll say it again. Your faith should not only accommodate things that are favorable to you. He's a good God when good things happen to you. Do you think he's a bad God when things that are not so good happen to you? Do you think he's less faithful to the one who lost someone over you that your, all your family members were preserved? He's not a bad father. He's just, he's faithful, he's kind. There is no inconsistency in his ways. So when we ask, let's ask with understanding and that our faith has a motive. What is your motive? Are you seeking to preach so that people might see you and applaud you? Are you seeking to have that car so that people can know that God is good? Well, if you don't have that car, there's news for you. God is still good. God is still faithful. He's still just. He's still true. Your desires are not tied to the goodness of God. Whether he grants them or not, the truth is he is faithful. He is faithful. He's too faithful to lie. Aren't we glad that some of the desires we had a few years ago that God did not grant? You look back and you think, ah, why did I ask that kind of desire? Why did, I even, why did I even think that? And you're so grateful that God did not answer. I mean, let's open our Bibles to Hebrews 11, 32 to 38. Hebrews 11, chapter 11, talks about the great examples of faith. And I'll start from verse 32. How much more do I need to say? It will take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouth of lions, they quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. Their body was a bot. But others were tortured refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They, are, they placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at, and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were changed in, were chained in prisons. Some died by stoning, some were sawed in half, and others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins and sheep of skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith, yet none of, God, none of them received all that God had promised, for God had something better in mind for us, which is Christ, so that we, they will not reach perfection without us. So your faith... If it does not include this but, it's not complete. And it's not by God forbid. It's not by it to not happen to me. It's that your faith has to align with the will of God. 
We have to be intentional about aligning our desires with the will of God. Faith is a selfless desire to do the will of God, trusting that he has your best interest at heart. I have a question. Do we believe Jeremiah 29 verse 11? Church, do we believe? Do we believe that the thoughts he has for us are of good and not of evil to give us a hope, future, and an expected end? You see, that expected end, it means it will end in praise. It means that Jesus will be glorified, not according to your definition. That at every point, Jesus will be glorified. That our King of glory will be exalted. That's what it means. Do you believe? If you believe, then you trust in the will of God. You trust in the purpose he has for you. Faith is consecration. It's not an avenue to fulfill our desires. Faith at all times, even when we sing, oh, I surrender to you, i withholding nothing. We sing it in faith, an avenue to consecrate our lives to God. Is saying, I passionately surrender myself, my being, my dreams, my ambition to the will of the Father because the Father that made me has the best interest, has my best interest at heart. I cannot love myself more than the Father that created me. So I walk in His will, I walk in His plan. So as, you're, as great or small as a mustard seed, as great as your faith is, or as small as it is, as a mustard seed, your motives have to be right. The reasons why you have what you are seeking God, it has to align with his will. Faith is saying, I am totally sold out to the will of God. And that includes his plan and his timing. Whatever happens during that plan and his timing, I trust in him. I'll depend on him. I'll hold on to him. He, actually, he's holding on to you. He's never letting go. He'll never leave nor forsake you. So he's holding you, really. Faith is moving with the hand of God. It's like a dance. Yesterday, we had a program, a dance with the Father. It's like having a dance. Your hand in his hand. He says in his word that you are engraved in the palm of his hand. So it's a duet. It's a dance. You align, Father, I don't know this. I've never walked this path before. So I trust in your will. Whatever instruction you have me do, I will do it. That's what faith is. That's what faith is. And someone might ask, you know, how do I even get from having these selfish desires to actually walking in the will of God or aligning in what God has planned for me? The answer is in Philippians 2 verse 13. Let's read Philippians 2, verse 13. I read in LNLT. And it says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. He's working in you, He's at work in you, what to will and to do of His good pleasure. He's not leaving you behind. So you need to allow God to work on your motives. You need to allow him to separate your desires and let his desires linger in your heart instead. You need to surrender. You are being deliberate in your faith walk with God. And you say, Father, I trust you. If you say, I'll go, I'll go. If you say, stay, I'll stay. You are being aligned to his will, not just the paths that are favorable to you. So how can we be more intentional in our faith walk with God? Like I said, I liken this to a dance with the Father. He's told me we are walking into the path of great abundance. And I go, okay, Dad, I've not actually walked this path before. You have given me this instruction. So I will trust in you. How do I trust? How do I hear? How do I listen to what he has to say? By fellowship. Fellowship with my Father. Fellowship, studying his word. Not through the lens of what I want, not through the lens of my preferred motive and desires, but studying the word of God in the context of his will. Not according to what I want. It's according to what he wants, that he might be glorified. And that's why I asked you, do you believe Jeremiah 29, 11? If he said he has a good plan for you, do you really believe he has a good plan for you? And when I say studying the word of God, 
in Hebrews. In Hebrews 4, verse 12. It says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. It lays it plain. You begin to see yourself. I don't know about you, but in my walk with God, I've, dis I've discovered, I've gone from, Father, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. And I just want his will to be done. Because what really is this life without Christ? What am I running after if I don't fulfill the desires of my Father? Why do I say I am sold out to Christ? Why do I say I am joined here with Christ in God if his will is not done? What's the point? So it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. And in prayer, now we don't pray in fear. We don't pray in anxiety and mask it as faith. We pray in faith because God has not given us the spirit of fear. He has given us the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. That I do not get to pray in faith, even if I'm seeing things that do not align. And he has actually told me that I will do this thing, but it's not getting aligned with what he has said. I will trust in him and walk in faith because we do not walk by sight. We walk by faith. And faith, like I said, is not aligning with our desires. It's aligning with God's will. Another one is being best friends with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I especially love this one because we put no confidence in the flesh. Another version in Philippians 3 verse 3 says that we do not put confidence in our human efforts. That's what it means. That we would depend on the Holy Ghost. See, the Holy Ghost is your advantage. The Holy Ghost is your advantage. He's on your inside. 1 Corinthians 6, um, 3 verse 16 says that, do you not know that you are the sanctuary? And he goes on to say that, do you not know that the Holy Spirit has a permanent home in you? So you can listen to the inner one on your inside. You have direction. You are not, you are not confused. You have the Holy Ghost on your inside. Be, let him be your best friend. Let him have a, relation, have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. He's already on your inside. Don't look for the spectacular. Don't look for the glamour that you forget that God can speak in simple ways like a strong nudge in your heart. Go to this place. Talk to this person. Be this thing. Go and drop your CV for that person. Go and greet this person in, in his um, office. That's how we are led. We are led by the Spirit. We don't use head knowledge. We are led. Please be led. Let the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Ghost be your advantage. I call him my standby, my encourager. When everything seems like nothing would happen, nothing would align, but if he has said it, <laughs> he will do it. I don't have to worry. I don't have to walk in fear. And this takes a conscious, a deliberate walk, a confession, confessing the word and saying that I will trust in God. I will depend on him. I will not do what, what, the, what God will not have me do. I will not fret because I have God, because I'm helped by God. Another way of being intentional is getting wisdom. Getting wisdom. During times that it will seem like we have delays or, you know, it seems like God is too slow. Go for more wisdom. Go for more wisdom. Because what you are doing in that moment is very important. You are either walking in faith or you are walking in doubt. You are either walking in, in, in fear or walking in, this is what he has said. In his will, it will be done. And when I mean go for more wisdom, go back to his word and study again about that subject. See what God has to say. There might be something that you are missing. There might be something that he has said that you are missing. 
And if you are seeking wise counsel, please seek spirit-led wise counsel. Please see, seek people that will actually speak faith and not fear. Be careful of the company around you. Guard your heart with all diligence. Guard it. If you are trusting God for something, you don't go to someone that says, uh, is not, are you the only one? Are you the first person? Are you, only God? Are you, the, are you the only child of God? Me, Seth, I'm born again. You don't go to, you don't go to people that are not spirit-led. People that, and I'm so grateful that I get to have this and experience this because it's so important to have people around you because when the pressure comes, they will speak faith into your life. When the fear comes, they will speak faith into your life. They will speak the word of God. When you are moving anyhow, they will draw you back in prayer. They will draw you back in the place of prayer. They will draw you back in faith. So seek spirit-led wise counsel. Always go for more light. Respond in by going for more light. That the tribulation is here is an opportunity for you to actually grow in faith. Be sensitive to instructions, like I said earlier. If God has said go, as much as it's a faith walk, it is also obeying instructions. If he has said it, sometimes God will, will, will re respond by giving you instructions. Go in that direction. Go. Don't now go and say God is not faithful. He's giving you instructions. He might give you through your, your inner man or somebody else. And you, 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 you confirm with God's word and you see it to be true. Then go with it. Run with it. We walk in faith this year. We obey instructions this year. And trust in his timing. Trust in his timing. See, if God shows you everything, there will be no need for a walk of faith. And if there's no walk of faith, there's no room for growth. If God shows you everything, how many of us have actually had all the information about something and we still messed it up? Like, I was the one in charge, oh, I planned it, I still messed it up. So what's the point of me having all the information when I will still mess it up? Why not give the one that can never mess up? Why not give the one my trust? Why not give the person that will say what he, he, he does and he will do what he says? Why not give it to him and trust his timing? Don't measure your process with somebody else's process. Your process is beautiful. You are growing in faith. It's not in comparison to somebody else. You are growing in faith. Trust him completely, unreservedly. That I will trust in you. I will yield to you. Your plan, your will, your purpose, your timing. I will trust in you. It's not by wearing it on your shirt. Trust God. Trust him in your heart too. It's not by having it as a banner or on Twitter. Is actually having it in your heart and doing it. Where we say faith is believing and acting on the word of God. What is the word of God? The word of God is the will of God. That's why we don't take any verse in isolation. Now finally, walk in love. Walk in love. Let's read Galatians 5. This will be read in Amplified. Amplified Classic. Galatians 5, 5 to 6. And it says, For we, not relying on the law, but through the Holy Spirit's help, by faith anticipate and wait for the blessing and good which our righteousness and right standing with God, that is, our conformity to his will in purpose, thought, and action, causes us to hope. For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith activated and energized and expressed and working through love. That means faith works through love. Faith is activated, energized, expressed through love. Are you walking in love? And they passed me, they did not greet me. Greet them again. 
if they pass you and they don't even reply, go. And she gossiped about me. So, it's not everything you respond to. It's not everything that you give audience to. See, don't let the devil keep you busy with things that are not important. Eh, they did it to me. I must do it to them. Is that what the word of God said? Eh, I must show you that I have it. Is that necessary? It's not necessary. If you are walking in faith, faith cannot go hand in hand with hatred. It cannot go hand in hand with gossip. Walk in love. Another um, scripture, the last scripture we have is 1 Corinthians verse 14. Chapter 14, sorry. Verse 1. I read it in NLT. It says, let love be your highest goal. Let love be your highest goal. Another version that I like his message, and he says, go after a life of love as if your life depended on it, because it does. Faith is powered by love. How do I know? Faith is powered by God, and God is love. So we walk in love. Amen? We walk in love. Amen? You don't give audience to the devil. We whip the devil in the place of our arena, and our arena is love. If you let the devil take you to his own arena, he will whip you, black and blue. Walk in love. Praise the Lord. Let's just give him glory. Father, we bless you. Because we walk in love. Because we yield to you. Because as you have said it, according to your will, we will do our desires are important, but your will is more important. So we will align with your will. To so that person that did not fast and pray because he thought that it was not necessary. Because God never comes through anyway. I urge you to try again. I urge you to believe again. This time, believe in the will of God. Align, in the will, align with the will of God. He loves you unconditionally and he has a good plan for you in this year every month ask God how God what God what step do I take next it is well with us let's stand up and give God all the glory Lord we give you the glory we bless you we love upon you we can love upon you because you loved us first We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Open your mouth and bless his name. Open your mouth and give him glory. Because he has said it's a year of great abundance. He would fulfill his promises. He will fulfill his desires. His will will come to pass. We will be partakers of his will. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory. Father, we bless your name. We exalt you over all. As we have declared with that song, the favor of the Lord is upon every one of us. In our going out and our coming in, we are blessed. Our morning is blessed. Our afternoon is blessed. Our noon time is blessed. Our night is blessed. He's, he's with us. In us. Around us. Behind us. In front of us. So we give him all the glory. Father, we thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Glory to God.